Hello and welcome back to the Django RRM series part 9. So in this tutorial I'm going to give you an introduction to model inheritance. So this would be a quick, as it suggests, introductory guide to model inheritance. We're going to cover the three options here, abstract models, multi-table model inheritance and proxy models. So if you haven't started looking at utilizing these when you're creating your models or if you're not too sure what this is, then this tutorial is for you. Okay, so as I've already introduced, Django has three inheritance options, abstract models, multi-table model inheritance, and proxy models. So I'm gonna give you an example for each one of these. Uh, just a simple example, just for you to get the flavor or the general overview of where you might want to utilize this and how you might construct this within your models. So straight across to the abstract models. So here you're going to create multiple tables. The first table is going to be your abstract base class, ABC, abstract base class. So from your abstract base class, you'll define certain fields. And the idea here is that you then create child classes and which you connect to your abstract base class. And those child classes will inherit all of those different fields from the abstract base class. So the abstract base class doesn't get made in your database. Um, it's simply there for reference for other child classes which are connected to the abstract base class to utilize those fields. And it's those child classes that then get created in the database. So this is better understood, of course, by giving you an example. So let's go ahead and create an abstract model. So there's nothing extraordinary here. Really, the only difference here is that we're going to just define this model that we build as an abstract model. So let's go ahead and let's just build a class. We're just going to call this base item here. And then we can go ahead and add some fields. So remember these fields that you build, these are the fields that are going to be utilized by the child classes, or sorry, copied across to the child classes. And it's those child classes will actually then get created in the database. So for example, you're going to use an abstract class then when you know, for example, you've got multiple fields that can be utilized or would be copied um, or needed in multiple other models. So ultimately here, this is just going to save you a little bit of time actually creating these fields or replicating these fields into multiple tables. So let's go ahead now and just finish this off. So we're going to set the class meta and that's where we define the abstract class. So we define abstract as true and that then creates this abstract class here. And then we can go ahead and add other metadata in actual fact within the class. And I'll talk about that shortly and how that gets inherited. So now we're going to just think about the other classes or the other models that we need to build for our tables uh, that are going to inherit these attributes here, or these fields from the base item. So let's just put that meta back in, apologies. So here we're just going to now just go ahead and create some more tables that we want to use or some models. Now I do apologize. It can be easier sometimes to understand the theory when we use kind of uh, naming systems that kind of give some context here. Uh, but so the item A is just referring to a different model that you want to build or want to extend and include these fields within this model here that you're going to build item A. So we'll go ahead and you notice here what the handy thing here is that of course when you build the other models you're going to continue putting the unique fields that are related to those particular models and also your meta items. Um, but of course like I said and I think I keep reiterating these here are going to be inherited within this class. So notice here that we um, we're not referring to models.model. Here we're just going to be directly inheriting from the class base item in each item here. So we can go ahead and just add some more models that you might need. And there we go. So that's kind of a simple example. So item A, B, C, and D, they are all going to inherit the fields of this base item. So let's go ahead and make migrations and migrate, and let's just see this in the database. So having migrated the data, make migrations and migrated, if I now just head over to my database, so I can open up my database. I've got the uh, the SQL Lite module here or extension here installed. So I can then just go down and have a look. So notice here, if I open up my model, 
uh, you can see that we've got item A, B, C, and D, and also base item. The base item isn't built, but item A, B, C, and D have all been created. Now, if I go into each one of these models here, you'll notice that we've inherited title, created, and update from our base model here. And that's the same then for all these models. So this is a good time to point you towards now the Django documentation. So here in 3.1 topics, DB models, that's currently where we are. You'll find some more information about abstract base classes, a similar example here. Now, something that I didn't mention uh, about meta inheritance. So when an abstract um, base class is created, Django makes a meta inner class you declared in the base class available as an attribute. Okay, so if a child class does not declare its own meta class, it will inherit the parent's meta. Okay, so if we want to override the meta, uh, let's just go back into our example. Um, you can see that if we wanted to override, we can then just extend from the base meta item. So in this case, base item and then meta, and then we can start adding our own metadata. So that's a, a way of kind of extending the existing metadata from the base item class. So just to summarize, apologies, one more time, uh, the abstract model here, create a, a base class. Those fields are going to be then included in any other child classes that are made and connected to the base class. So let's move ahead to the multi-table model inheritance. So let's look at this in comparison to the abstract model. So with the abstract model, we have an abstract class, the abstract base class, and that doesn't get included in the actual database. So here a multi-table model inheritance. Here the difference is that every model uh, is a model all by itself. And what will happen is that Django behind the scenes will be building one-to-one -one links created between the different models. This one-to-one -one field that is created and this link connection between the two models or more, uh, that's going to allow us to query both tables for the same data, for example. So let's just look at the mechanics of this to uh, identify the differences here. So let's just go ahead and now build a new model. So I've got one pre-made. So I'm gonna create a class here called books. So you can see here, we're going to have title and created. Those are the fields that we're going to use. Now, what I don't need to do here is define any meta like we did previously with the abstract model to declare the fact that here we're going to be uh, using a multi-table model inheritance setup. All we do here is we create a new class and instead from extending from models.model, .model, our second model here is just extending from books. So this is how we're going to build a multi-table model inheritance. So what's happening here is that if I were now to migrate this, Django will create two new tables, books and ISBN. And in the ISBN table, we will then see a new one-to-one -one field created automatically. And we have a one-to-one -one link between these tables and that will obviously mean that we will be able to query either table for the same information. So let's just go ahead and run the migrations. So we just refresh the database now. We've uh, created some more tables and straight away we see we have two new tables here, books and ISBN. So there's no sharing of tables here like the previous example. So what we defined here, the field, sorry, here in each of these classes, that's what's now appearing within the table in the database here. So notice that I said earlier, we, we automatically create this primary key. Um, so Django, has, sorry, has made a primary key behind the scenes and it's defined it as books underscore PTR ID. And that's gonna be a connection to the ID field of the books table. So here we're making, like I said, a one-to-one -one field or one-to-one -one connection. So behind the scenes, we've seen that our new field is created automatically. Well, we can go ahead and override that by just defining our own field, for example. So this is what was created. We could just rename this, for example. So we're creating a one-to-one -one field. So if you're not too sure about one-to-one -one fields, again, just have a look at the Django documentation first. You will find in the documentation a few different examples of a one-to-one -one being utilized, but 
If you are new to databases, it'd be well worth your time actually looking at different relations that you can have between tables. So one to many, one to one and so on. And that's really going to give you a better idea how to model your data in your database. So back in our example here, you can see that how we're creating this connection is we're utilizing the parent link. So this is really the key that uh, defines this uh, relation that we have between the ISBN and the books class or models here. And that's set to true. So if you are completely new, I I ask you just to focus on the differences or just to, uh, yeah, at the start, just to focus on the difference between this type of setup and what we saw previously, the abstract. And that will give you a, a, at least the initial start to consider utilizing something like this when you're building your models. So let's head over to the third option here, proxy models. So let's provide a comparison again. So we have abstract models. So that allows us to reuse uh, fields within multiple tables. We have the multi-table model inheritance that allows us really to build one-to-one -one links between tables, just to kind of summarize what Django automates for us. And then the last type of setup here or option is proxy models. So here we're focusing on the Python. So not necessarily the model. So when we want to start maybe extending the functionality or adding functionality uh, to a model, obviously we can do that within the model space, but we might want to use a proxy model to, find, to, to define some additional behavior for that particular model that we can utilize within our, within our application. So generally what's going to happen here is our proxy model isn't actually going to be created by the ORM and it's not actually going to appear in the database. Here we're thinking about behavior. Here we're thinking about Python rather than the model and making, like I've already said, uh, behavioral changes or fun extra functionality that we can perform on the same model as the model itself. So let's go ahead and just show you a simple example. So the proxy model starts off with a simple class. So here we've got book content, for example, and then we've just got the fields title and created. So just a standard a table, standard affair. Now, like I said, in this class, we could define different uh, properties. We could define different functions, etc., for this model. Now, there may be times eventually where you want to add some additional functionality that's different from what's defined here within the, the model here. So, for example, multiple functionality, and sometimes that can be better declared within a proxy model. So we can go ahead and create a, a new model here and notice that we're defining or we're inheriting from the book content. And then for example, maybe we want to add an additional um, object manager, for example. Uh, so we could define that within our proxy model. Um, and then we go ahead and add some meta. So our proxy model here, we need to be defined within the class meta proxy equals true. And then we can go ahead and, for example, create some ordering. So we can add some other meta here that's different from our original class. And again, that's just adding extra functionality. So we have the option of accessing this data in the book content, but we're just adding new functionality here. So we're almost separating um, the this code here from the logic that we want to include for this particular model. So we can go ahead and for example, add some different functions, etc. So you get the general idea. This is all about functionality in our proxy model. Um, and we can leave the, the fields, etc. and the setup within the class here. So yeah, it's pretty un uncomplex, really. We're just providing a different interface, if you like, for the same underlying database. And I think that really is the key. We're just uh, creating or providing a different interface for the model. So just going ahead and migrating this. I think we're going to cause a problem because we don't have a manager to find. So I'll just remove that for now. Um, just go ahead and migrate. So we've migrated. Let's just refresh just to show you the fact that our proxy model isn't created. So our book content is uh, created. And you can see that book orders you can see that there isn't a model available for that, for that in our database. So the book orders proxy model does not get created.
And there we have it. So abstract models, multi-table model inheritance, and proxy models. So I do hope there was some value there. If you're completely new to this uh, type of content, hopefully now you've got a general idea of how to utilize these type of techniques or options within your models. Again, I apologize for kind of any real kind of concrete, solid examples. Again, it was just about the setup, becoming familiarized or familiarizing yourself or pointing you in the right direction for you to now think about utilizing these options. Thank you very much. And hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.